the confusion. Confusion defines itself to be bewilder, jumbled, make unclear, mistake, a lie for the truth, or that the truth should be questioned. Mistake one thing for another, what I find to be true today is that we churches now lift up men to draw men, not lift up God. When you look at John 12, 12, 12, 32, I apologize. John 12, 32, it says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So there should not be any confusion about us lifting up men to draw men, appealing to men to pull them in. That's confusion. I want to give you a, an original basis from where confusion came from. Revelations 12, 10, it ain't going to be up there. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying, and you heard this last week, in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Here's the thing you got to understand about accusations. 90% of the time they false. So that's to employ confusion. Now, here's the funny part. That wasn't going to work on God anyway. He's God. So every time the enemy came before God to sow confusion, to throw accusations, God could see straight through his foolishness anyway. But it is a trick of the enemy he still uses today on the people of God. Confusion. You question the truth. And when you question the truth, it is seen today as something that you should do. Some folk that don't strike a note with, but it strikes a note with me. I question the things that are false. What are their origins? I don't question the truth. I don't question the word of God. I, I find that to be where I find my peace and my settlement. Are you with God or the world? Your belief, is it of God or of the world? Your words, are they of God or the world? Your reflection, do you see God or do you see the world? When your emotions are disrupted, are they disrupted by God or by what the world says? When your emotions are disrupted, are they disrupted by God or what the world says? When your emotions, what am I saying? When you worry, when you concern yourself with the things of this world, is that of God or is that of the world? That's confusion of the world. Where do you live? In God or the world? Let's be clear, God is not the author of confusion. You find that in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. God put this in scripture for you to understand. I did not author it, nor did I authorize it. These are not methods that I use. I don't use confusion to get you to come over to the truth. The enemy uses confusion to get you to leave the truth and come to him. Mm -hmm. He'll present you with false accusations because he's the accuser of brethren day and night. He'll present you with false accusations to make you question what you know to be true, only to fall into the trap of a lie. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. I'm not going to touch that, 
the end of that because that, that's a whole nother sermon. See, when you go to church, you're supposed to have peace. Ain't supposed to be confusion and argument and well, you can't sit there because that's so-and-so seat. And it ain't supposed to be all of that. God said that this place, this house of worship, this sanctuary is for the protection of the believer, is for the home setting of the believer. And as a matter of fact, God says what I, I'm going to tell you something about confusion. Confusion is such an ugly thing. God dislikes it. I can prove it. Revelations 3, 15, 16. Now, what you're going to see here is the word used, lukewarm. Lukewarm is confused water. Either you hot or you cold. Lukewarm, no such a thing. See, we've adapted in our lives now where we no longer stand for the truth, but we push compromise. Let's compromise. You don't find compromise in the scripture. Get away from me. You don't find that in the scripture. It's either right or wrong. Only two ways about it. So when God said, let's clear up the confusion, stop being confused. There is no compromise. If it feels good, it's okay to do. The devil's a lie. Snapping somebody's neck feels good to a killer. Is it okay to do it? Revelations 3, 15, 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Don't let that confuse you. Even God said, I would prefer you to be cold or hot. What does that mean? I can do something with either. It's that middle man I, I just can't stand because he's confused. He's got all that stuff in his head. He's got all of the influences of the world floating around in his head. All of the ideas of people who do not want to conform to the walk that it takes in God. They send confusion your way in order for you not to walk uprightly before God, but to be like them. He said that I would you were cold or hot. Verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I'm just going to do away with you. You say you're a believer, but you don't want to live the believer's life. You say you do right, but you're always getting caught up in wrong. Well, Bishop, you know the Bible says that we ought to work out our own salvation. That's right. Don't forget the next part, with fear and trembling. That means respect for God, doing what the words say. Question yourself. Don't question God. Question your in. What's your motive? What's your intention? Question that. Don't question the word of God. The word of God stands true when all else fails. I've never seen the word of the Lord fall and not accomplish what it is meant to accomplish. And it is still to this day in circulation doing just that. We must stand and declare without fail that it's God all the way ain't no half stepping with god ain't no compromise well god if you let me do this in the world i live for you god don't make deals like that so if anybody telling you that lie god is not the author of confusion that's confusion to a person that's why so many people are confused in the house of god today why because the preacher will tell you it's okay for you to do this it's not hurting nobody I'm not worried about hurting nobody. I'm worried about hurting my God. Because there's a lot that don't offend you. A whole lot. People can cuss around you. People can slap you. People can do all manner of evil. And they don't offend you. But to God. 
Is it a stench in his nostril? Is it lukewarm behavior that he spews out of his mouth? Is your life something that God spews out? That's what that means. Your choices, your decisions you've made, that you made on your own, having the truth present. You had the truth. You've been told. There ain't no way you're going to sit there and tell me that you didn't know. Wrong answer. You decided to discard the truth and walk in your own fleshly thought process. That made you look warm. God said, get out. People really don't think about that. If God skews you out of his mouth, what does that mean? You're no longer with, that's death. In case you didn't understand that. That's death. Apart from God is death. Y'all catch that. So then it is up to us to make a choice. Joshua 24, 15 says this. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Will it be God or man? It says that. Then it goes on later on to say, as for me and my house. In other words, I don't care what you choose. I don't care the choices you make and the decisions you make. It don't affect me anyway. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Ain't no choices. Ain't no compromise. Well, listen, I'll go to church with you this Saturday. But the next Saturday, you come to the club with me. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. That has never come up, by the way. But I'm just saying. We don't do that. It's God all the way. Ain't no off days. He don't take one. And I take my example from him. Ain't no off days. There is not a time that God has presented me to preach that he was not present to do his thing. He's never left me standing here alone to speak of my own flesh. He's never done it. So when these preachers talk about I, 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 go ahead on, man. Do your business. I never have to worry about a word coming across this pulpit because it's always God. And he has never been absent, slept in late, didn't show up. Never. He's always prepared me. So what does that say to the average believer? Walking with God keeps you ahead of the game. There's no confusion. There's no need to guess what's going to happen. Let me take you somewhere. Please allow me to. When we start to look at things, you've got to understand there's reasons why God's word gives us instructions on certain things to pull away from. Because God is trying to get you, forgive me for saying trying, God presents the idea to you. God presents the information to you. God presents the way out to you for you not to fall into the traps of the enemy. Romans 12, 2. He said this, and be not conformed, molded after, chasing, trying to be like, to this world, but be ye transformed, taken away from, turned around from, not like, by the remo renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Be transformed away from there and walk into this newness that I've prepared for you by the renewing of your mind. In other words, I don't want your thought processes that before you got saved, you still got. My question to you is this. Y'all better hear me clearly. Did you get saved? I've been saying it for years. If you got saved today and tomorrow, you still doing the same things. Where's the change? We preach change before. Without change, your sorry don't mean nothing. 
battered husbands, battering husbands, battered wives. They got a battered wife syndrome where she feels like <clears throat> she's been through it so much that it's the norm. So then for a man not to hit her, there must not be any love connected. That's the norm for her. Why? Every time he would beat the brakes off that girl. Baby, I'm sorry. Bring home roses. Bring home flowers. Bring home candy. He apologized. But never changed. So then she felt the apology. She saw the gifts. Not to change. And she took it to be normal. So now she's stuck in a place where the abuse is what she's come to expect. As people of God, you say you get saved. You say you give your heart to God, but you don't change. That's why you confused. Later on, we're going to read a word where it says when truth has come. Then we're going to end with telling you who truth is. I just jumped the gun, but that's all right. It's my gun. God gave it to me. I'm good. <clears throat> He said, transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Please don't skip over that. So you can prove. Proof is in the pudding. Proof is an example given of the result of said process. I hope that didn't sound like a riddle. Proof. If I want you to understand that if you stick a key in an ignition, it'll start the car, I'll show you proof. I'll stick the key in the ignition, start the car. That's proof. So if I tell you something is going to run, I'm selling this car, and I tell you it runs. You're going to want proof. Before you put money in my hand, you're going to want proof, correct? God said that you may prove. Prove to who? See, proof is also to prove to you that what God said is what it is. He said, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ain't enough proof going on. Ain't nobody proving nothing. We say we get saved, but then there's no proof. Where's the proof? Where's the proof? The Bible just told you what the proof is. He said, when you get saved, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where's the proof? My mind is renewed. And I no longer say the same things. I no longer walk the same walk. I no longer talk the same talk. I no longer perform the same duties. I'm under a new walk, a new talk. He said this. John 16, 13, after you've been <laughs> transformed, he said, now, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He takes you literally out of confusion. A lot of time, confusion comes because you cannot know what's ahead. So then somebody preemptively tells you, and you believe that, and then when that doesn't come to pass, you're confused. Well, if God says I'm not the author of confusion, ain't no confusion in what I tell you. What I tell you, I tell you. It is what I say it is. He says, and that's the truth has come. Mm. Can we connect the dots now? Let's connect the dots. After truth has come, John 14, 6 says this. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the what? 
The what? True. You read, and I appreciate that. I don't know about the rest of these folk can't read. He's the what? Truth. What's that? Truth. The truth. Huh. See, we, we often don't know what truth is. The way it's supposed to be. The correct way. In the beginning was the word. And the, so truth was established before ye. Truth was established from the beginning. Stay with me now. I'm going to help you understand this truth thing. So then that tells us that before Adam got confused. Here we go with that confusion. With Eve's explanation about this fruit that God told him not to partake of. Before he got confused. The truth of God was in him. Confusion came and ran God out. Catch the example. God says, I'm not the author of confusion. So then who had to be introduced? Satan. Follow the story. Adam was fine. Eve came along, was fine. Then all of a sudden, Satan comes in the picture and start throwing in confusion. Now I can't see the truth that I once. Well, it looks a little cloudy. I start to question. That's exactly what he did at the beginning. When she started converse, conversing with the, the enemy, with Satan, she says, she added something. Well, God did say that we couldn't eat it, but he didn't say we could. What? Go back and read the story. She added a word. God said, in the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. She told Satan, God said we couldn't eat or touch. Confusion. So Satan proved something. Because in the Bible, on the story, it goes on to say that after she saw that it was good, because she touched it and nothing happened. Confusion. That's how you fall into confusion. You take that one little step. Mama tell you, listen, listen. Mama say, don't go to the pool by yourself. Because you might fall in and drown. Don't even touch it. Listen. The baby. Uh, uh, uh. Nothing happens. Baby tipping that foot in the water. Nothing happens. Oh, ain't nothing gonna happen. The baby spins just right and accidentally fall in. Now everything that mama said is coming to pass. Because you don't know how to swim. Now you're drowning. But because you were confused. And you decided to tempt what mama said. See, all of this comes to one focus. When the Bible says that the enemy accused us day and night, the enemy day and night sets up confusion, sets up accusation, falsehoods against us. It is up to us to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's up to us to prove that. How do we prove that? When the Bible says resist the devil, and you'll flee. So all I got to do is put up the least amount of resistance. I just got to resist. I can't succumb. When the idea presents itself, when my old self pop up in my head, I have to resist it. I have to say, no, I'm walking this new walk with God. I, I can't go back. I can't turn back to my old ways. I can't turn back to my old thoughts. I can't turn back to the things that didn't work anyway. That's what I don't understand. We turn back to old methodology that never worked. But we keep turning back to it. Why? Because we're confused. Let's, kill it. Let's get all of that out the way. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you 
into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you the things to come. John 16, 13. Now, once we've received the spirit of truth, we begin to ask for orders. Psalms 119, 133. Order my steps in thy word. How are you going to know what your orders are if you don't read his word? Silence covers the room. How are you going to know what your orders are if you don't read his word? Proof is in the pudding. The enemy keeps you confused to think you don't have to. You don't need a prayer life. You don't need to read the word. There are more pressing things in life. Get up and jump on your phone the first thing in the morning. Go out and find something to do the first thing in the morning. Sleep later and later. First thing in the morning. By the time you get up, it ain't morning no more. It's the afternoon. And if God's presence has shown itself to show up in the morning, you'd have missed it. He said, order my steps in thy word. There's a passage of scripture that says God's grace is new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He's faithful to issue out new things in the morning. But you're not up to get it. It ain't according to the confusion of your mind to think that when you get up, that's your morning. I think God laid out time, did he not? He designed time. He's the only one who's not affected by it. We're affected by time. God is not. So if God laid out when the sun comes up and when it go down, who are you to tell God, well, when I get up, that's my morning? Okay. You're going to learn today. Order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. God, help me through your word, and then don't let sin creep in and take over. We don't pray that enough. That has to be prayed daily. God, don't let my iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me, God. Give me how to walk, where to walk. I'll only know that in your word, all right? Now open my word and go to this book. He'll tell you what to do. Then, when you don't understand why we got to read the word, John 1, 1 through 2 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So how are we supposed to know anything about the God we call God except that we connect to the word? Because the word is the only thing that was there with God from the beginning. The word is the only thing that was there from the beginning to know how to navigate this life. How to live this life. How? You keep falling flat on your face because you ain't receiving orders from God. It really is that simple. You keep falling flat on your face and things are not working for your good, but you want to quote that scripture, but it ain't working for you because you're not in the word of God. The spirit of truth has not come. You say I'm a Christian. You say, you claim you accept Christ, but you don't accept the change. There's a change that must come. You must change from your confused state of mind to a state of mind that walks in clarity. With God, there's clarity. There is no question of truth. 
John 14, 6, I'll give it to you again. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life you want. Take it and make it personal. Jesus said, I am the life. What life, God? The life you want. What you mean? You want my peace. You want my blessings. You want my overflow. But you don't want me. Well, guess what? I am the way you get it. I am the truth of all of that you want. And I am that life. I'm it. I'm all three. I'm the way to get it, I'm the truth of the matter, and I am the life that you're trying to get. Then he goes on to tell you, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You ain't getting to my daddy. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You got two sons. Let me throw this in there. If I train them right, I would have to train them because they're not fighting. If I train them right, even I couldn't get to you. I'd have to go through your sons. And because you got two of them, uh, both of them not tiny. They're good sized young men. And trained correctly, I won't get in two feet of you. Only way I'm going to get to you is that the sons let me. The only way to God is through his son. And he said, I am the way to my father. I am the way to truth. I am the way to the life you want. I'm the way. So clear up your confusion. Stop thinking you can get to God without Jesus, without change, without being transformed, without the renewal of your mind. Stop thinking that because you can't. Ain't no way. You're going to continue to have the same mistakes and the same circumstances that you're currently in continually throughout your life till you die. Then when you stand before God, you're going to ask, well, I thought uh, that's what you get for thinking. Did it hurt? Actually, yeah. Uh huh. Now, depart from me, thy work of iniquity. I know you're not. What? You mean I live my whole life like this and I'm still going to hell? Yep. Without change. Don't look at God. Look at yourself. You decided that living a Christian life was a compromisable thing. That you could have everything you wanted in the world and God. Do you not understand that those two are enmity, enemy of each other? When God said so, when I said I love the world that I gave my only begotten son, he was talking about his creation. He wasn't talking about the influence of the world. He was talking about his creation. God spoke <laughs> in the world's entirety. He could see then every living soul now and that to come. And because he loved us all, he gave his son as the solution to our problem we created. We created that problem. Somebody say, well, Adam did it. So what's your excuse? What's your excuse? So Jesus came and got rid of Adam's sin, one for one. What's your excuse now? What's the reason for all your mistakes? All the stuff you done done. All the stuff you're currently doing. All the stuff you're thinking about doing when you leave. What's your excuse? You can't blame Adam. God so loved mankind, he gave his son. That covered up Adam. Adam's off the hook. Jesus got on the hook for him. Because through Adam, we experience sin. But through Christ, we experience salvation. <laughs> he traded one for one. So now what's our excuse? We still walk in confusion. We still walk desiring the things of the earth. We still walk wanting to have what the Joneses got. Get out the Joneses pocket, you ain't got their money. Stop. Walk how you're supposed to walk. Do what you're supposed to do. The Joneses won't speak for you when we get to heaven. Because I believe that the Joneses won't be there 
They'll be somewhere else. And I'm not talking about myself. Yes, my last name is Jones, but I ain't the Joneses. I don't have it like that. Please be sure you can live with your choice. There is no remix here of the world in Jesus, just one way to God, and that's through Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word on today. Clear up any confusion in the minds of believers, God. Help us to stand in truth. For your word declared that after the truth has come, he will make all things clear. He will establish the right cause in our life. He will move the world out of our heart. Why? Well, God, we thank you that you've given us a mind to be transformed, a heart to be renewed. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Touch each and every person. Touch their hearing that they may hear in obedience and walk uprightly before you. In Jesus' name, hold us together. Keep us until we meet again. Father God, and even then, cover, protect, keep, and guide. Heal, touch, and deliver. In Jesus' name we pray. All those who agree, say amen. amen.